Hey, what's up, guys? You got Dom here and Dan. Hey, how's it going, what's everyone? Up? And uh, we're going to be doing the Nova rankings uh, for the GOT tournament. So welcome, fans of that, and everybody who's been following. We really appreciate the support. This season, uh, this tournament season has been absolutely insane compared to the last one. I think last season you guys had 32 contenders for the Goodbye Auras tournament, and now that it's got a new name, new rebranding, uh, we got 128 applicants and uh, a good amount of uh, substitutes as well in case anybody left. So, huge shout out to all of you guys for the support on uh, this season's GOT. Yeah, that, that's absolutely insane. We talked about it in the beginning of it, and it was only 32 people, and then we bumped it to 64, and then there was still a bunch of support, and people wanted to play, and it just went all the way up to 128. That is... Couldn't push it further, though. That would have been crazy. Yeah. Would have been crazy. Would have been way too... But yeah, so we're, me and Dom here, we're going to cover the uh, top 16 drafts in the Unova Conference, and for those of you who don't know, Ever, we had eight draft pools consisting of each of the Kanto badges from Boulder to Earth, and uh, two draft pools were basically put together to one conference. And uh, if my memory serves me right, Unova consisted of uh, Soul, I think, and uh, I, I don't remember exactly. <laughs> Jeez, I'm bad. I, I'm bad at this. Gee, I'm bad at this. But uh, I could, I could check. I could check, the, but uh, yeah, it's no point. No point doing that now. But yeah, so do you want to kick us off at number sixteen? Yeah, so at number sixteen, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start it off at uh, Ray, otherwise known as Pokey Rob, and uh, we ranked him sixteenth because he's got a really good amount of synergy as far as like a bolt turn for and like bulky momentum gainers, and that has been shown to work in the past. I don't know how well it can work. Uh, sustainably against a large amount of battles and teams with different combinations, especially when it's an open draft. But uh, we'll see how he's going to be able to use it. Uh, I really, but I also really appreciate uh, Mega Diancy this generation due to the mega buff of getting the speed instantly. So going from base 50 to 110 uh, without the need of protect, and of course his uh, Zmon being Mega Salamence, which we all know how great it is with uh, Supersonic Sky Strike from Fly, Inferno Overdrive from. Uh, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Fire Fang, uh, Devastating Drake, uh, Tectonic Rage, just to mention a few. Uh, the Volturn combo in uh, Rotom and Decidueye with me and Xiao. And of course, Scary Salazzle as well. People sleep on Salazzle because they see the frailty, frailty and they see the uh, lack of defenses. But that 117 speed stat and the ability Corrosion being able to toxic stuff like Toxapex, uh, any Steel type, Amoongus. Just such a huge, like, uh, nice check in the back. Like, people just don't expect it, and I really like Salazzle. The only, like, critique I have, I suppose, is the fact that Scizor was available, and you've said it yourself. Scizor was available, but you still pick Kling Clang. But, uh, if Kling Clang works out for you, man, I'm, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Gotta love Ray with the memes. <sighs> That's your boy Ray, your boy Poker Rob, and the Austin Toros. But, uh, that is the, that is our number 16th pick. And uh, with that, we shall quickly transition over to the number 15. Which uh, is none other than Hiker and his Boston Bulldoors, which has a uh, pretty spicy draft, if I do say so myself. We got really big hitters and big defensive threats as well. Mew and Mandibos are going to be two of the more hard to get rid of mons just because you kind of have to getting rid of those and preventing them from just you turning out or just being a general nuisance. He's got Silvali, which obviously you can use any of the forms of Silvali in this tournament, so you're going to have to constantly try to figure out what kind of set on that he's going to bring and what is going to be a threat and what isn't. Um, Volcanion obviously has a pretty good amount of bulk and can hit like an absolute truck and has amazing coverage as well and two good stab moves. Uh, Delmize, you know, Delmize is really shown itself to be a really good mom just because it's got a lot of attack and can actually threaten quite a bit of mons so when people th think they can just throw out something in front of Dalmize to get rid of a mon that's going to be a support function they get blown back by anchor shot or power whip it even gets earthquake um terrakion is a zemon like you can't really do much better than terrakion is a zemon it uh sds and something dies it's not a matter of having a tech to it it's just choosing something to sacrifice and then it's still got a boost to, to be a threat afterwards so uh outside of revenge killers it's a really really good choice for a zemon um greninja obviously 
everyone knows how good Greninja is at just being an absolute threat, no matter how it's used. Uh, it's fast enough to target a lot of mons that are maybe not quite so bulky, but still fast and can be a threat. So it revenge kills very easily. It's got a really fantastic move pool. It can set up hazards. And uh, it, it's just shown itself to be a really, really good thing to have on the team. And even though it's pick round two, it's still uh, Torrin Greninja, not Ashkren or Protean. But that still doesn't mean that Greninja by any means is a bad pickup. And I also really like the synergy in hazard stack and hazard control on um, Hiker's team as he has uh, Defog Mew, Defog Minibuzz, he's got Spike and T-Spike Greninja, he's got uh, Rapid Spin Delmai, Stealth Rock on Metagross and Terrakion. Uh, so and he's got a nice, he's got, and of course Mew being able to learn basically anything. So he's got a really nice like hazard control on his team and momentum in terms of U-turn on three of his Pokemon, Parting Shot and U-turn on Silvali. Like I, I, I really like this team. Like the more I look at it, the more I start to like it. Certainly would not have fun prepping for it. <sighs> Me neither, man. Like and I, my, I thought my team was solid. I would have a hard time against this team, man. Hope I don't play it if I get to the bracket round. Yeah, somebody else knock him out, please. <laughs> somebody knock out Hiker, please do that now. Well, with that, we're gonna transition over to the number 14 slot, which is uh, Zaffir and his Royal Tiger Ninjas. And uh, looking over his team real quick, it consists of a Garchomp, a Slowbro, Superior, Sylveon, Z, Lucario, Mega Manetric, Chandelure, and a Crobat. How do you feel about that, Doc? The, he's definitely got one of the better uh, Fairy Grass Steel cores, if not uh, Dragon Steel, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, just because it's taken a kind of a pseudo offensive or, or bulky offense path as opposed to just defensive or just offensive. Uh, Sylveon's obviously going to be able to be functioning as a wall or a wall breaker. Uh, Garchomp the same. Uh, maybe not a wall necessarily, it's just a deterrent kind of like Landorus is with the uh, Rocky Helmet bulky set. And it's also really fast and really strong so you can run it Bandit or Scarf. Or, uh, it, it just has a lot of functions and obviously it's one of the best rockers in the metagame in this time. And um, Lucario has fantastic coverage and the moveset has got extreme speed and close combat. Um, just those two moves alone coming from a uh, Pokemon that can easily boost and start to sweep, especially late game, is really, really good. Um, and things that commonly resist either of its uh, stabs, he has the coverage for it. It also has higher special attack than attack, so you can use Nasty Plot and go that route as well. So that's always going to keep you guessing, even more so when it's a Z-Mon. Um, Mega Manetric too. That is a really, really good cleaner. Uh, it's the fastest mod on his team, and the base uh, having 405 speed is not bad when it's uh, at max speed. Uh, it's going to be outspeeding most things and can even outspeed slower scarf mods. Uh, and it forms really good bolt switch, uh, a really good bolt switch core when paired with Crobat, which is, I guess, his primary, his only means of uh, hazard removal. But it's not a bad one at all, and it's also very bulky and uh, clears the way for a Chandelure, uh, Sir Piers, and absolutely amazing wall breaker and it's something that people can sleep on very easily because once you get up to plus four plus six resistances don't really matter anymore and it's got the speed to carry that through the only uh i think the only issue uh i personally have with this team is the fact that crobat is his only way of hazard uh removal because it puts a huge toll because it has to take 25 percent every time it switches into rocks and then if it gets pressured uh by the correct switches by his opponent crobat's gonna have a hard time getting rid of hazards but uh, generally, other than the last two picks of his team, it doesn't look to be a major issue as you have Rica uh, Lucario, which quad resists, Garchomp, which resists, and everything else taking it neutrally except for, well, Chandelure and Crobat. Uh, I really like the uh, yep. synergy between this team. I uh, got a nice approach of both bulk and offense, like you mentioned with Garchomp. Slowbro, of course, being that annoying bulky psychic that we all know and love with uh, T-Wave, Slack Off, all that uh, shenanigans like Scald, Psyshock. Just to mention a few. Superior, we all know what Superior does. Glare, Contrary, uh, can also be, can be an interesting physical attacker as well with like Coil, Leaf Blade, Knockoff, etc. So, interesting hidden tech on Superior. Don't sleep on the physical set. I uh, mentioned basically what needs to be said with uh, Sylveon, especially with Lucario's coverage and the option of Z-moves. You'd never know if you're going to have to take a physical Z-move or a special Z-move. Yeah, having focus blast in close combat is really scary when you don't know which side it's going to be hitting on. Dark, Dark Pulse, Crunch, Psychic, oh, I think yeah. it's then headbutt. 
it's nice. Lucario, Probably man. Sure. Scary Mon. Scary Mon indeed. But uh that that about sums up the uh Royal Tiger Ninjas and their uh very threatening team. And with that we you uh wanna take a look at Mr. Team? Oh no, this is uh Chili and the New Jersey Eveltals. By the way guys, I'm really sorry I sound like this right now and like yeah because I'm kinda sick, so my bad. But uh, you you want to take us uh, away on Chili's team? He's got a pretty interesting roster right here. Yeah, with the New Jersey Veltals, with that uh, I, I like the way his mask or not his mask got his emblem looks. It's, it's really chill. It's not <laughs> you know what people normally have, and that's pretty cool. Shout out to the Chespin. Um, but he uh, was really really well balanced. Let's take a, taking a look at the team he has real quick. He has a uh, Megalopony, an Azumarill holding the Z Crystal, a uh, Nita Queen, a Zapdos, a Serena, a Metagross, a Tyrantrum, and a Honchkrow. Our first thing to notice, uh, he has arguably one of the best Megas in the format, being uh, Megalopony. No immunities due to the ability Scrappy, being able to uh, jump kick a lot of things uh, pretty freely, uh, going for return. Uh, being the sub power up punch set like or power up punch last resort. There's a lot of interesting stuff I think somebody in the tournament as well. Uh, of course, we're not going by uh, the players here and their matches play We're just going by draft, but I saw I think survive did some cheeky work up baton pass sub toxic set Like a full support lopany, which was pretty interesting to see uh, Then there's a Z Azumarill, which uh, I don't know how much I personally uh, like Z Azumarill, but I think it's a nice or uh, a niche pick as uh, Z Belly Drum is a huge threat because uh, if you're weak, like if you're at 25% and you force a switch or something with Aqua Jet, you go for the Z Belly Drum, you get all the way back up to full, go back down to 50, and now you are plus 6 and you're just going to town. So you can also run, of course, Waterium Z or Fairy MC and do like a Twinkle Tackle. Um, you, can do a, you can do a Black Hole Eclipse from Knockoff, can do Breakneck Blitz from Return for that matter. There's a lot of things Azu can do. It's just I feel like more than often if we see Z Azumarill, we're gonna see Z Belly Drum. But um, it's still a nice pickup. Nina Queen, I love Nina Queen. Uh, bulky uh, can be bulky, can be offensive. Sheer Force can have uh, Toxic Spikes and uh, Rocks. Uh, Sludge Wave, Ice Beam, Fire Blast, Earth Power. Sheer Force, such a nice ability. Uh, amazing Electric type in Zapdos. Uh, bulky Spinner in Serena. Metagross gets. Um, Access to Stealth Rocks, Meteor Mash, Steel Typing is very important this gen due to all the Fairy Types running around. Tyrantrum, uh, not your everyday dragon you see in the format, but it's still a very nice pickup. Incredibly bulky on the physical side. Hits like a truck, Choice Pan, DD, uh, Head Smash from, with Rock Head. Absolutely incredible, and of course the Murder Crow himself. The only kind of thing I notice here is you are a bit Fairy weak, which you have to watch out for, but you do have the resistances in Metagross and uh, Nita Queen. But other than that, I think this team looks really solid. Yeah, the only weakness I can, or not necessarily weakness, or one thing that's really easy to note about this team is his speed tiers really sharply descend from Lafani to Zapdos, uh, being base 100, which is kind of like, if you're base 100, you're kind of fast, but not really. Um, and then really sharply off into Needle Queen and then Metagross, uh, Tyrantrum and Honchkrow and uh, Serena being all pretty fairly slow and Azu not really having much speed to talk about. Um, but all of his mons are bulky and can take a hit and either have a method to go around being slow or can increase their speed. I just noticed now by looking at it though, the only thing that uh, I also noticed when I mentioned the three weaknesses to Fairy, a bigger issue for you, which I mean is a common issue in when you draft, is that you have a uh, pretty big weakness to Ice being uh, Honchkrow. Uh, Tyrantrum, Serena, Nidoqueen, and Zapdos. Five weaknesses to Ice is going to be uh, something your opponents can exploit. So just be on the lookout for that because Ice type moves hits you pretty hard. Uh, kind of ironic be with your name being Chili that uh, the chills is what's going to get to you. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Hey, so I'm so clever. But yeah, other than that, I really like this team. Um, it has nice synergy between the only issues like the Ice weakness and the speed tiers but uh, I think you'll find your way around that and uh, with that we transition over to I think Mr. Bagel and his uh, Louisiana Starmies and uh, 
what do we see right here? That's a, that's a spooky draft right here where and it just keeps getting better. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Bagel, he has a uh, Mega Gardevoir, uh, which is a really fantastic pick, and it's just one of the best wall breakers you can get in league format. It is very hard to switch into. Um, obviously, Steel Types can always switch into it, but you have the chance of hitting a Focus Blast, which is going to hurt a lot from that gigantic special attack stat. And it's got the base 100 speed, which puts it in a really comfortable uh, speed tier, especially for a wall breaker, and its special book isn't... I think that's really like I think it's I, I think it's base 135 or something like that if I recall correctly. Yes, yeah, indeed I am. 68 base HP and 135 speed def. That is a uh, that's bulky mon on the special side. Yeah, if you really need to, and it has wish attack <laughs> for the list. Yeah, it can, be, it can be a great support Pokemon as well in terms of like you mentioned, wish, uh, will o wisp. It can also have um, it can also have magic coat to bounce back hazards if you're expecting somebody to bring that. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, like, Mega Guard War, clean pickup. I love me some, uh, Mega Guard War. Absolutely fantastic yeah, Pokemon. as well. Diggers Diggers B is a really fantastic wall breaker, so it, it's gonna be hard to prep for something to take a Diggers B's choice man attack, or even Scarf attack, because its attack is really high already. Uh, or a Gardevoir's, uh, Hyper Voice. There's actually not really much in between those two mons that can take either of those hits, because everything that's resisting Gardevoir's spam attack is gonna be taking a lot from, uh, Diggers be spam attacks. A sh shout out to uh, shout out to Skarmory as long as uh, his Guard War doesn't pack uh, Thunderbolt for some reason. I keep forgetting it in those people. That's, but uh, see, Gardevoir is great. Ab above that though, that that is just his top two mons. He still has another six Pokemon on his team, which uh, just by oh, the top two, that's good. scary. And uh, he adds in as his third mon, he adds in his Z user being Z Dragonite, which is very scary. Another dragon. Uh, flying type as a Z-Mon user, and I very much like those because uh, Supersonic Sky Strike is arguably one of the best Z moves uh, in draft league format. Of course, not counting stuff like uh, exclusive Z moves like Stoke Spark Surfer or Genesis Supernova because Mew is broken. <laughs> but um, Dragonite is really clean. Uh, huge coverage, the original Dragon. Multi scale, of course, being able to take even quad effective hits uh, from full just because of that ability. Um, massive move pool can exploit on both physical and special side. Uh, Dragon Dance, uh, Roost, just a great overall Pokemon. Uh, carrying over, he's got a Magnezone as well, put, uh, put, uh, picking up some Volt, uh, Volt Switch. Damn, I'm completely out of it. My bad, guys. But uh, some Volt Switch momentum uh, to work together with Diggersby because uh, Diggersby can also U-turn, which is incredibly scary, and having a Volt Turn core that hits so hard in uh, power U-turn, like huge power U-turn, and then uh, a potential like analytic um, volt switch. That is a scary combination right there. Like yeah. you better pick a sack because that no, uh, combo is going to hurt. This this is the four months we've gone over thus far. I'm just thinking about how refreshing it would be switching back and forth between things because every single mon is kind of a threat, and you have to decide: okay, do I attack? Do I switch? How do I switch? Because I'm going to get blown back no matter what. And then he, we also have his defensive core uh, consisting of Vaporeon, Mandibuzz, Arcanine, and uh, Hitmontop. So double Intimidate, uh, double way of hazard control in Defog and Rapid Spin, Wish Passer in Vaporeon, Roost, uh, Mandibuzz, um, Morning Sun, Arcanine. Just a lot of ways of recovery. Like his his defensive core is built really solidly, and they work really nice together. Like honestly, I don't yeah, see. Yeah, for sure. Uh... I'm noticing one thing that could be a weakness for his team is that he doesn't have any form of hazards at all. So hypothetically, uh, uh, at least his offensive mons, someone could just run a bunch of focus sashers and try and whittle it down or <laughs> try to live that way. Try to live that way. And then have some mons so you basically just have a mon with taunt and can live Arcanine's hits and. Uh, as long as he covers his bases and makes sure that he's uh, doing all that he can to prep, he should be able to keep momentum and eat up hits, bring in a big hard hitter, and just keep his opponent threatening on their toes the entire time. And, uh, yeah, I definitely agree. It sounds about the all the coverage that uh, needs to be talked about, but uh, to think that this has been uh, from 16 to 12, these have been the first, like, five teams or so, and we still have from 11 to 1 to go, so that's... Uh, that's crazy to see these drafts, and they're getting really good as we go. Yeah. Uh, but next up is uh, 
Andrew and his Cincinnati Bengalades. Now, uh, another uh, case of uh, scurry drafts with a Mega Pokemon that I really like to see. Mega Absol returning in Generation 7. Love that Pokemon, it's absolutely majestic. Um, and let's just say that this man has a majestic Pokemon on team, Volcarona, Suicune, uh, some scary stuff as well. Z Mew without Genesis Supernova because we banned that in GOT because we realized how uh, broken that is. Uh, Skarmory, Hazard Control, uh, one of the best Hazard Controllers in the game, and being able to both Hazard stack and take care of uh, in terms of Defog, of course. Uh, but it has Stealth Rock, Spike, uh, Whirlwind as well, so facing, including with Hazards. Absolutely just a phenomenal Pokemon. Thunderous oh, hitting Oh true. Uh we got Thunderous hitting hard like an absolute goddamn truck. Uh base 145 special attack. There isn't a whole lot that wants to switch into this thing's coverage. Uh Thunderbolt, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, Dark Pulse, Incinerate even for those uh pesky steel fire or steel grass types. Uh that got that clean. Sludge wave for them fairies, flash cannon too, iron tail even if you want to run physical, knock off. This thing can do a lot of stuff. Then we got the big boy threat himself, Mr. Mamoswine, which uh, has the dual stab combination that a lot of teams struggle with being ground and ice coverage, especially stab because, uh, I don't know, there's just something about ground and ice. There's so good offensive typings and a lot of teams struggle to deal with it unless you make specific counters. It also uh, is one of the more reliable stealth rockers just because it has such the, an, uh, a high offensive pressure. Pressure uh, Getting it up stealth rocks isn't really hard for it to do on a uh, easy switch. And it, if you do switch, then it, it has every potential to have knockoff or obviously you don't want to take an icicle crash even if you resist it. Like even Skarmory, it's not going to be super threatened by it, but it doesn't want to come in on an icicle crash. Uh, Suicune, obviously it's always a win con. Yeah, you have to watch out for anything with Taunt or something that can just break through it, but it's not super hard to set up a sweeping sweep after you've knocked off, or knocked out, I should say, uh, anything that can pressure it or prevent it from sweeping. Uh, which, the same can be said for Volcarona, because as long as there's no rocks on the field, which is pretty possible for this team, the Skarmory, Mew, and Hitmonlee all being there, and the Magic Bounce with Absol, uh, Volcarona it will pretty easily be able to pull off really good sweeps. And then, of course, as you mentioned, Hitmonlee is no stranger to sweeping himself with uh, normal gym fake Thunder out gym. with lychee berry, uh, endure, and just being able to tear three uh, teams with that massive speed that he gains after unburden. Uh, so, high jump kick, knock off. Like it's a very strong Pokemon on the physical side. It's why you get uh, Tyrogue with uh, more attack and defense to get Hitmonlee. And of course, Mega Absol, like we mentioned earlier. A uh, huge threat with uh, great physical and special attack. You gotta worry about play roll. You gotta worry about fairy coverage, fire coverage, ice coverage, shadow ball, uh, dark stab. Like Absol is an absolutely humongous threat, and I feel like we're gonna see it a lot more this generation. And I'm really happy that somebody picked it up and managed to build such a uh, nice draft around it. Competent, very competent. Uh, so uh, with that, we're moving into. Uh, Top 10, I think, unless there's something else you want to mention on uh, Andrew's. Oh, team. yeah, we can move right on. Uh, so, at number 10, we got Pierce and his uh, South Dairy Scissors. Now, as you guys see from his team, scary stuff right there. A very offensive draft, but still some bulk in it. In uh, Fer uh, that's not Ferrothorn, that's uh, Fortress. <laughs> Mixing up my steals. Uh, I got Fortress, got Zygarde, which can be both bulky and offensive, and got Togekiss. As well as Z Victini, Raikou, uh, Vaporeon, nice and bulky, uh, Roserade, and Zoroark, which can cause a lot of mind games. I love Zoroark in draft league format. The draft literally just makes me think of like top tier UU threats, um, which isn't a bad thing at all because he's got a lot of synergy and balance on this team with uh, Roserade and Togekiss. Uh, Roserade obviously has really high special defense, so it can be put in a defensive role if it has to be and it has recovery. Um, spikes, toxic spikes, aromatherapy. Uh, it can be a really good support mon or a really good offensive mon with its massive special attack stat and uh, fairly good coverage and technician. Um, Zoroark being able to disguise itself as any of these mons, again, having that balance and synergy uh, makes it very difficult to determine where Zoroark is going to be and what it's going to disguise itself as. Um, and he's even got coverage on these mons where he could pretend that Zorark is Rosary to Sludge Bomb or 
flamethrower with Victini or U-turn, but it, I, it just has a lot of uh, use there. I personally think one thing that can really throw people off is uh, if they see Zoroark disguised as Victini, and they've sped crept Victini, and it outspeeds and goes for U-turn, because the damage will be pretty similar due to Victini's base 100 uh, attack compared to Zoroark's 105. Uh, people can assume that the Victini is scarfed because the damage will be very, very similar. True. So that's also something that uh, I noticed while looking at the team. And also, I think the nice thing about having uh, Roserade, not only the Technician Hidden Power is basically powering them up to become... HP Ice becomes basically Ice Beam, uh, Flamethrower from Hidden Power, Fire, Thunderbolt from HP Electric if you want to go that route. But I also like the fact that Spike and T-Spike can take some pressure off of uh, Fortress, which can open up its move slot to Explosion if it wants to do that, Bolt Switch, Gyro Ball, uh, counter. Just a counter for that matter, just to open up and get uh, leave Fortress a little bit more versatile than just Hazards and Rapid Spin. And uh, also having access to Defog Togekiss as well, just supporting Fortress even more. And having Z Victini, <laughs> the fact that we haven't even touched on that yet, Z Victini, can run Z Bolt Strike, Z Fusion Flare, Z V Create, Z even Glaciate. This thing gets all of the signature moves and god, they are strong as hell and I can't wait to see Victini go go ham on some teams. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna tear through things. <coughs> but just oh, Z Create by itself. Just if he decided to do a Sun Team for whatever reason. Good lord. Oh, good. Sun, Sun, now, Sun with Torkoal plus Trick Room. Over. GG. He can just use Z Sunny Day and he gets a plus one speed boost and V Create in the Sun. And then lose that speed boost to V Create, but I mean, he's taking a life with that unless it's like a Heat Train, Flash Fire. Yeah. Uh, also, Zygarde, phenomenal threat in uh, Generation 7 with the new move of Thousand Arrows because what's a switch in that isn't a grass type? Thing is so broken, oh, and it gets Sludge Wave and Sludge Wave. You think you you think you're gonna threaten this thing with your Tangroats and stuff? Nah, gotta ride them poisonous waves. No, Zygarde is incredibly scary. Subcoil, DD, Outrage, um, Thousand Arrows, Extreme Speed. Zygarde is just ridiculous, man. I love it's how I, I love how it's important now because Gen Six just kind of left it there and then said goodbye to it. Yeah, they're like, we didn't forget about you, buddy, and then. <laughs> they teased us with it too by leaving the thousand arrows and stuff. Yeah, the, the files were, the code was in X and Y, but they didn't give it to us. And then we got uh we got your boy Raikou here, which we haven't touched upon. Fast electric base 115, uh hitting I think it's 361. Yep. Oh, correctly. Uh Volt Switch, um of course great move in this game uh, in the game, just being able to pivot. Um call APIs, Calm Minds, Sub Calm Mind, Shadow Ball, Hidden Power. I think it's Signal Beam. Pretty sure it gets Signal Beam. Not 100% sure about that, but might. Uh, Aura Sphere, of course, that forces you to run a Rash Nature, but I mean, still, you're really fast. I think you speed tie with the base 100, if not by outspeeding by like one point. But uh, something like that. Which uh, you also get access to extreme speed if you absolutely need to. And see like an opening where like you don't exactly knock out. Uh, you can take a hit from something that's faster than you. You don't 100% knock it out, but you can leave it in range of extremes. So that can be like a hidden tech, which will be yep. uh, nice. I got Togekiss, uh, does what it does well. T-Wave flinches for days because uh, Serene Grace is a great ability. Vaporeon, we've already talked about this thing. Wish Passer, Scald, Water Absorb, the ultimate Suicune counter. Unless it's running like Hidden Power Electric. Yep. You know, the Crocoon counter. Uh, Rose Raid and Sorark, we've basically touched upon uh, what this team's about. It's a really nice team, and uh, I, ex I expect to see a lot out of this team, honestly. I feel like you can do really well. No pressure on you, Pierce. No Most pressure. Team, he has the tools to prep, and as long as he preps well, he'll, he should always at least give the other person a run for their money, if not come out on top. You're right, you're right. Uh, but moving on into the number 9 slot, we have a random, because we have random in this tournament, and we also have random man. He got random and his LA slackings, and uh, boy, boy, this team, it's got a- It's very similar to the last team we just talked about, man. He's got a very, he's got a very offensive team, this man. He's got some nice bulk to back it up. This team is uh, way scarier offensively than it is defensively. And uh, oh, yeah. let's just say, I love it. 
he's got just enough bulk on everything that it's going to be frustrating trying to target him offensively uh, and be covering all of your defensive bases at the same time. Like, uh, we, we talked about, we also talked about um, para flinching with uh, Togekiss earlier. Yeah, Togekiss is nice and all, but uh, the OG para flincher and the OG, like, just hex god being Jirachi, Serene Grace, Iron Head, Heart Stamp, Body Slam, just keep going to town, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, keep keep throwing it at us, Moon Blast, play rough. This thing gets Draco Meteor. This legend of a Pokemon gets Draco Meteor, and I love it. Ah, uh, I, I love Jirachi, man, great Pokemon. Just super annoying to deal with, especially like Scarf variants and stuff, because it doesn't matter if you have a counter to it. It'll just sit there and flinch you down, doesn't matter. You can bring protective pads, but then it, what if it's not even the flinch that, like, it can run Calm Mind and just sweep through you. Oh, yeah, it true. can uh, just be, a, you know, general nuisance, stealth rock, toxic wish pass, all those kinds of things. Wait, protective pads protect you from flinching? Yep. Damn. Learn something new every day. I actually didn't know about that. Learn something why they new added it. every day. Uh, also, Z Garchomp, incredibly scary threat. <laughs> like, as if Garchomp wasn't scary enough. Adding Z to it, because I think the GOT also allows Sand Veil if you run like Z Sandstorm. Pretty sure that's allowed. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's allowed. And giving Garchomp a plus one speed boost, get making it basically Scarf, but allowing to swap up moves, and having a potential evasive boost. That, uh, that's some uh, scary stuff, right? Also, Very it's fun. a wide move pool. Poison Jab, Fire Blast, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, uh, Iron SD. Head, I think. SD. This man can get can dancing with them swords going into town. Like, Garchomp is incredibly scary. And adding on a Seed Crystal. Whew, try switching in. Find me a proper switch into this thing. And that's only his first... That's just his first two. He's got an Azumarill, an Arcanaut, a Chestnut, incredibly like um, nice built uh, Firewater Grass Core in terms of both bulk and offense. As uh, Chestnut hits hard physically. Uh, they mainly hit physically, but uh, they also tank hits like crazy. Mega Aerodactyl, uh, one of the more fast uh, Megas in the game. Uh, Tough Gloss, of course, being able to boost stuff like Wing Attack. Um, I wish this thing got Head Smash. If this thing got Head Smash, oh, thing would do so I'm much damage. Not sure. Aerodactyl would be busted. I uh, got um, Jolteon as well, another fast electric emission uh, Raikou earlier. Jolteon even faster, Volt Switch Shadow Ball. Basically the same coverage, they're very similar, but uh, you know, Jolteon's just a tad bit faster. And of course Tentacruel being able to uh, hazard control, uh, putting up Toxic Spikes itself, got Stealth Rocks in uh, both Jirachi, Garchomp, and Aerodactyl, got Spikes in Chestnut, got a nice... Uh, Nice hazard uh, stack in hazard control, uh, which I like a lot. You got a bunch of Azu, Banded, uh, Assault Vest, Citrus Berry. Like, there's a lot of stuff you can do. And uh, I just like this team. I feel like uh, like if the other team was going to give it a lot of work, this one is definitely going to get put in some extra pressure. Yep. I got anything else to add to that, Dom? No. Uh, no, I mean straightforward it's like we said very offensive uh and it can use its bulk to its best it's a very like uh, usability i guess it's a very bulky offensive draft and i like looking at it i like the look of it I figure most of the games with this team are going to be somewhere in the 20 to 30 turn range <laughs> true uh but with that we're going to move into the second half which is like the top eight uh and with that we start off with uh, alucius i think and is uh, Honolulu Hootoots, which, uh, sp speaking of, he's, uh, his logo is uh, Pinch Emoji Lit. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you uh, talk about uh, uh, Lucius' team real quick. Alright, so uh, Lucius, he's got another, he's another guy with the Zubik team, which again is just a fantastic team on uh, pretty much virtually i won't say impossible to cover for but when it's got a zemo behind it's gonna be really hard to switch into anything victini goes for regardless of if he resisted or not um tornadoes t which has really fantastic uh synergy with victini being able to just continuously u-turn and not have to worry about u-turns being blocked and they both also uh have amazing coverage uh torn t has got a really good stab move in hurricane it's got knock off heat wave hidden power ice uh hidden power anything you need really for coverage u-turn dark pulse uh, Sludge Wave, Heat. Uh, can uh, even run Iron wave. Tail. This man can run Iron Tail. Gotta smack yeah, you with that power, Iron Tail. Yeah, Super Power, Knockoff, it's... 
a great utility mod and a really good cleaner if you need it to be as well. Uh, hip out on and extra drill together that's fantastic having uh, the potential for a sand sweeper on top of having the threats of torn and victini there mega alteria being the icing on the cake because pretty much with this team looking at it you're going to be constantly having to worry about one thing or another that's going to be putting a stop to you hippo being able to get up rocks and keep uh, whirlwinding you keeping out yawn i guess to stop any sweeps or uh setups behind subs uh, Empoleon is a really good mod just to, you know, defog, stealth rock, keep the utility there as well. Conk is just fantastic. It's so bulky and it can hit so hard. Uh, you can never sleep on Conk and it's got amazing abilities and amazing coverage and all the punch and strain punch, hammer arm, knock off, ice punch, poison jab, thunder punch. I'm pretty sure it gets fire punch too and all of those can be iron fist or sheer force boosted. Um, and then Roto Mo, which is a really good, uh, it's got really good typing and synergy on this team, having something that can hit really hard uh, and handle bulky waters with Leaf Storm or Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, uh, Will O Wisp, Pain Split, all those kind of moves. Um, and just having something else to Volt Switch and keep up the momentum with uh, Torn T and Victini is really cool. The only thing I can see being a bit of an issue for. Uh... Uh, for Lucius is uh, if his opponent gets uh, rocks up early and are able to keep him up as his uh, hazard control is both weak to ground and earthquake so EQ spam can be very uh, EQ spam plus rocks can be very scary if they are able to keep rocks but I don't think that should be a major issue uh, with stuff like Rotom uh, Mo around and Torn and even Conk Helder for that matter so it's a very nice yeah. structured team. I just noticed uh, the hazard because Altaria is also weak to rocks before it mega evolves. And with Victini and Torn as well, that could be a bit of an issue, but uh, I don't see a uh, reason for I think if you, I think if you prep correctly and uh, play well, you should be uh, easily be able to handle that situation. Lots of berries on his unfolding. Shout out to berries, man. Shook a berry for the win. <laughs> or, or, uh, Chopperberry, Chopper, Chopper. Uh, but yes, yeah, so that's uh, number eight to uh, Lucius and the Honolulu Hoots. Got uh, number mm -hmm. seven though, coming into Gamma. We've got someone original, the most original name and draft league format. Oh, uh, shout out to uh, shout out to Jolt of the Token Minorities Jar. Uh, got uh, what other Toronto Star Raptor teams do we have? Uh, probably a bunch. I just can't think of them at the moment. Yeah, we know there's a lot, a lot of them out there, but uh, origi an original draft name, original draft plan, but uh, it's a draft plan that never fails. Uh, it saddens me that Pelipper is good now because I absolutely despise that Pokemon, but I can't deny <laughs> I it. I love it. I I I, 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 I can't stand it. But that's just that comes from my uh, personal hatred for seagulls, and it evolves from Wingle. So all sea fell. That, that that's my problem. But uh, rain never seems to like rain and sand are probably two of the most consistent like uh, uh, well doing drafts in the format. Uh, with rain, especially now getting the support in Pelipper, which can support itself with Hurricane, uh, weakening of course Mega Scizor, um, Z Rain Dance Manaphy, Celebi having weaker fire attacks uh, receiving, uh, Kingdra of course can with Swift Swim can get that uh, get that set up and like focus energy and go to town with Kritra. Uh, Electivire, that's what that thing is called, can land its uh, thunders guaranteed. The only thing that takes the heavy hit on his team is like non fan if he brings the rain, just gets smacked by a water move across the face. Literally, a water <laughs> gun puts it in 30. <laughs> How a bubble for them. Shout out to Bubble. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very clean team, and um, you know, it's rain. It's not a whole lot to say about it. Got nice cover, like got nice momentum in Scizor, Pelipper, uh, Celebi, and even Manaphy for that matter can U-turn and Electivire can Bolt Switch. Um, yeah, and Manaphy with Calm Mind in the rain is just an absolute nightmare to deal with uh, after it's gotten up like two of them. I think you think you can uh, Toxic it and wear it down that way. Nah, Hydration. Feels bad. Uh huh. And then we got Mega Scizor. You got it down to 1%. Rest. Yeah, rest. Feels bad. We got uh, <laughs> got Mega Scizor just chilling uh, with Sylveon. Two Pokemon that can be both incredibly bulky and can also be a huge nuisance to your team, like offensively. Uh, Celebi, of course, can set up Stealth Rocks, can uh, Leech Seed, can uh, Nasty Plotting, can even Baton Pass. Like, you think Manaphy with Calm Mind is bad? I imagine, but getting a Baton Pass and Nasty Plot from uh, uh, Celebi first Celebi. into it. 
or even into Kingdra for that matter, like a crit trap plus two, scary stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, or even Sylveon if it's like a specs variant. <laughs> Nasty mm -hmm. blood baton pass Ooh. into Sylveon and just goes to tan a town on everything. What's a resist? Never heard of it before. <laughs> What if he just goes Agility, Sizzler, Baton Pass, and this will be a nasty plot in the Sylveon? I don't, Calm think, mind. I don't think you're allowed when, to do that. I think you're allowed to do... Agility wait, Pass into Celebi, but you're not allowed to Agility Pass into Celebi, into Nasty Plot, yeah, into Pass. That would have more oh well. In, in a perfect world, that would have been cool. <laughs> in a perfect I like that world. he has Electivire, though. That's a cool spin on uh, also, having an electric energy. Yeah, I like that, because Motor Drive, like, it just pressures your team like you're not able to click electric as much as you want like with Pelper and uh, Electivire they have great synergy together sadly because uh, <laughs> can't can't earthquake uh, because uh, Pelper chilling in the air and can't uh, Thunderbolt because Electivire be like nah motor drive unless you of course got a cure in black and you safe up both of you and click fusion bolt yeah. <laughs> shout out to cure in black <laughs> that's the boy shout out to Terra uh, Bolt and can... Moonbreaker for spamming thunder too with the rain um, one big thing I have noticed that's uh, going to be a problem for this team is that, not necessarily always, but he relies really heavily on the rain being up for the team to like be super offensively threatening, uh, and he's facing another weather or he chooses not to use rain, then he's kind of lost a lot of the momentum he had for the rain being up, and uh, which pressures the teams because they'll be able to put up a much better defense and uh, pick off man if you pick off Sizzle or uh, pick off Celebi eventually. Dawn fan doesn't have recovery. Isn't that usually a problem for a rain team or for a rain, yeah, rain team specifically? I think rain is the uh, weather that it takes the biggest effect of not having its weather around because when people build rain, they focus a lot on rain. And once the, yeah. rain, once the rain is gone, their team gets severely weakened. Like, one thing I can see being an issue for this team, very specifically, is a Pokemon with Freeze Dry. Being able to deal with uh, Pelipper, Kingdra, oh my gosh, yeah. and uh, getting being able to deal with Pelipper Quad, uh, Kingdra Quad, uh, Dawn Fan, Manaphy, and then having some fire coverage for Scizor and uh, Celebi. Mm -hmm. That leaves Electivire and Sylveon, which uh, Steel and Ground should do that coverage too, so... Freeze dry, fire move, steel, and ground. Wow, that sounds so like make a mammoth swine with it and power fire. Sounds like a mammoth swine to be honest. Sounds like a mammoth swine with freeze dry to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he'll be able to get past that. I, I'm sure he'll be able to figure out. And I've seen this. I've seen one of his games. He he knows how to use it. And uh, I mean, if he didn't knew, know about that that specific weakness, he knows now because hopefully you watched the power rankings and left the like. <laughs> Mid plug. Yeah, shout out to those. Sure. Or he gets it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so nothing more to say. We got rain here from the Toronto uh, Star Raptors uh, 5.0, aka the 50th team with that name. Just joking. Love you, Gemma. Uh, but next up, we got uh, at number six, we got Turk of the uh, Toronto Lux Race. It's not a Star Raptors team. Would have said that would have been another Star Raptors. Oh, would have been flames. That would have been crazy to have one back to back. Shout out to Firewater Grass, Fairy Dragon Steel in four picks. Yeah, he pretty much stuck to it. Got a uh, Tapu Bulu, scary Pokemon. Uh, got Celesteela with a Z move, making that thing terrifying because like a Totemize uh, with uh, Super Sonic Sky Strike from Air Slash. That thing can go to town really fast. Uh, of course, Tapu Bulu, everybody knows what it does. Hits like a truck. Can also be very bulky with like Leech Seed and stuff. Mega Charizard X, no stranger to the format, very consistently good Mega. Uh, Starmie, as a control, can be bulky, can be offensive. Uh, water Psychic like Slowbro, but you know, hits a little bit harder. Nido King, the more <laughs> offensive Nido. I mean, I prefer Queen myself, but uh, for this team, I feel like King just fits better. Yeah. Heliolisk, decently fast electric, beats that one, uh, beats the 100 base, 105 base at uh, sitting comfortably at 109. Really awkward speed tier, not being able to outpace like Lottie Twins, Gengar, etc., but still being able to outpace stuff like uh, Infernape and the uh, uh, oh, yeah. the horses. Horses, the horses. Uh, Me and Xiao, nice and U turn, and uh, Mesprit being able to set up rocks. Um, got also nice U turn, like. It, at the last three picks, there we have some nice like uh, uh, turn synergy. Yeah. And being able to go from like something like 
uh, me and Shao coming in scaring something, Voltur or you turning into something like Celesteel or something, just scaring the ever living crap out of your opponent. Very scary, very offensive, and also a very bulky team that can be played defensively or offensively, depending on matchup. And uh, I very, I really like this team. There's a reason why it's number six. One thing I really appreciate with this team is that I've noticed a lot of people in this uh, these drafts have been picking Tapu Bulu and then having a Pokemon that relies kind of heavily on Earthquake Spam like Doug Chao or Landorus or Exadrill. And you, you can do that, but you have to be very, very careful with how you're playing in those turns. And I've seen... We have uh, seen multiple two, times two in this game turn game. where there was grassy terrain and uh, Dougie, yeah, came, Dougie came in to trap something. I think it was a Mega Manetric. And because of the grassy terrain, it only did like what sixty one percent, and then Dougie yeah. died. Mm hmm. So I saw uh, the thing is, someone lucky, had a Metagross with Reflect, and luck, Earthquake did nothing. Lucky for Turk, uh, Earth Power does not get affected by grassy terrain, so Nido King is all safe in Gucci. Yep. <laughs> but other than that, I, I don't. Only think thing he has to really worry about is Zard. Yeah, Zard's Earthquake. See if he has to run that for like Heatran or something. But there, I honestly more don't often think... than not, I feel like it doesn't really need earthquake though. It really rarely does. I think like the most common sets that you see is like DD, Dragon Claw, Fla uh, Flare Blitz, and uh, Thunder Punch or Roost, depending on matchup. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he has the arguably better Zard, I'd say for League format. Zard Y is really hard to switch into in League format, but it's the not. Prob um... The problem is its quad weakness to rocks. I'm only giving it like two switches basically. And Zard has the ability to uh, turn into X and then only be taking 25 and it's pretty bulky so it can pretty much roost up on a fair amount of mons and uh, you know DD roost is always a huge threat. And also if you want to be extra spicy you have like something like sub belly drum and then go to town. Like Zard is scary if that goes off, Jesus. I remember when X and Y first came out and Zard X was pretty much the most terrifying thing to have to go up against. Like you're kidding me, Zard is so Slash. Spam, spam your king shields, my dude, and pr hope that he doesn't click DD on the turn you king shield. DD. Don't DD on the king shield, my dude. Please don't. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically Turk's team. Very nice build. Nothing that counteracts each other in terms of Bulu. Bulu has been a huge struggle for a couple of the teams that drafted it. And uh, yeah. I like the synergy between here. Very consistent speed tiers going from... 115 to 109 to 105, 100. Um, I think it's like 70. What's Nido King again? It's like 80 something? 87? It's 85. 85. 85. It goes from 85 to 75 in Bulu, I think. Don't remember exactly how fast Steel is. I think it's 61 and then Uxie at 50. Yep. Wait, Uxie is faster than 50. 75? Uxie's very fast, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's based 90. Is it that f no? Uxie's not that fast. Super fast. It's ninety five. Faster than you'd expect. It's ninety five. Jeez, this thing is fast for no reason. It's ninety five, yeah. Jesus, that thing is fast. It just sits there and it's fast as crap and it's sleepy. And you're, and you're expecting it to be slow, and you're just like, wait, hold on, what? Well, that, that yeah, just I've seen people everything. use that to its advantage. It's a uh, it's a very good fat fast mon. It's a nice and reliable fat psychic. Well, yeah, that's uh, Turk's team coming in at number six. Very, very clean draft. I expect this to do very well. Number five, we got uh, Furfrau, though, and his uh, totally original Milwaukee Sauce Bucks. Never heard of that team before. But uh, I'll just say, this is where uh, stuff gets really spooky. What'd you say, Dom? Yeah, so he's got a, a really, really good team on. Uh, really powerful mom in general, and oh uh, Kieran Black, Black about to mess having terrible, about and to mess it people just, up. it's really hard to switch into <laughs> a lot of the mods that if you leave down to Mark, I uh, can't really say that anymore when Kieran's in the picture because switching into Earth Power uh, with Levitate or whatever, they're still going to get hit, and Ice Beam with a stab move is really, really strong, Fusion Bolt for water types that want to come in, and of course there's Draco Meteor and Outrage, and it's got an absolutely monstrous attack stat, and a pretty decent speed tier too. Uh, Tapu Koko with Electric Terrain. Boosting uh, up that fusion One thing bolt. that people forget about is having Electric Terrain means you'll never have to worry about like Amoongus or 
something that spans for like Breloom being a problem for him. Uh, fantastic coverage in Grass Knot, Daz, and Gleam, any of the hidden powers, Brave Bird. Uh, it can be used on the physical or special side. It gets Roost, Calm Mind. Uh, Nature's Madness obviously is just a really, really dirty move because things that want to come in to stop getting hit by a really strong electric you don't have to worry about having half their health taken just because um i love it and it keeps the momentum up and it's always a really good threat i wouldn't say uh electric terrain uh protects this team in specific uh, as much from spore as you see he has a torn flying above the terrain a scarm flying above the terrain and a gyarados before mega evolution flying above the terrain that's something to watch out Wait, for, but being uh, touching on touching on the ground matters. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's um that that matters for psychic terrain, uh, to get the psychic moves boosted, and it also, if you're flying, it doesn't protect you from priority. Uh, electric terrain matters in terms of sleep, and um, grassy terrain only matters for the uh, grass power boost, not the earthquake reduction. And then you have um, misty terrain where. Dragon moves get reduced no matter what, but you will not be protected from uh, status if you're flying. So that's why a lot of Top of Phoenix run Scald in order to burn stuff like Lando T and Salamence. Interesting. Learn something new every day. Yeah. You taught that, me that just changed the whole game for me. You taught Thank me you, that. you taught me protective pads. I teach you terrains. Fair trade. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But yeah, um, so Torn. We talked a lot about Torn in the earlier draft, but uh. A very very versatile Pokemon regenerator as well with U-turn to keep up. Who cares about rocks when you can just switch out and gain more health than you lost anyways? Uh, a very very uh, reliable assault vest mon can run specs as well. Banded. This thing has a huge both physical and special move pool. No reason to repeat myself. Good hazard control Pokemon in uh, Skarmory. Got some nice and clean speed bo speed boost in uh, Scalopede speed pass uh, Necrozma. I've used that mod before, loved it. Uh, very good Pokemon with like Prism Armor, being able to take Ghost, Dark, and Bug moves a little bit better. Mega Gyarados, absolutely incredible uh, threat if that thing gets him a DD. As you might as well call that the whole game. That, not the half, the whole game. And then there's Gengar too. It may not have Levitate this generation, but I think that honestly helps him out in this team because protecting him from Spore and stuff. And uh, Curse Body, uh, it, I guess it's a, it is a downgrade, but it isn't a huge downgrade because getting that disable off when your your opponent is spamming EQ and your top of Coco is the only thing alive, getting yourself protected from that is clean. It's nice safe. Yeah, you can kind of like sacrifice it to uh, hope to get that thirty per, get that thirty percent. I mean, Skull burns every time, so yes, Curse Body goes off every time. Yep. Scarf uh, Destiny Bond too is always an option uh, if he wants to just have a Kamikaze role on the team. Oh, uh, true. As long as you don't, as long as that plot doesn't get seen through early, though, because uh, this generation's destiny bond with being able to fail like protect, very unfortunate. Oh yeah, but, uh, you can't spam it. It's not a spammable move anymore. Sadly. But yeah, like you said, Mega Gyarados also has like a huge amount of speed up, so you can really easily do like a speed up sleep talk set and just blow people back. Or you can just do a lot of stuff with the Gyarados that you wouldn't expect to be able to do. Also, um, are you tired of getting, are you tired of getting those uh negative six priority roars? Don't worry about it. Rest sleep talk roar waterfall. There you go. Regular speed. Crossman is just awesome because it's it's kinda like Suicune or uh Reuniclus in a way that you I, I really like, have to watch out for it setting up because once it sets up to a certain amount and it has iron defense and calm mind so it's really hard to break through without having it be able to be super effective to anything and it gets moonlight and uh, as long as you don't have dark types stored power eventually it gets so strong that our resistance isn't going to matter so uh, you really don't either need taunt toxic or something along those lines to handle it i i usually like to compare uh necrozma to Cresselia. Because they're very similar in what they do in terms of bulk, but the only difference is the fact that, well, Necrozma gets stored power. And uh, being able to set up, like, you think Reuniclus, you think Acid Armor, you think uh, Calm Mind, and you think Recover. For Necrozma, you're mm -hmm. thinking Morning Sun, Iron Defense, and Calm Mind. Basically the same kind of coverage in terms of bulk. Yep. So they're very similar in what they do. Uh, well, I mentioned more so Reuniclus, but... Uh, they're very similar in what they do, like the Calm Mind setup, and the way to beat them is not by a direct approach, but more so a more passive one and shutting down what they do and then whittling them down. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I personally think that this team... But again, if you don't have that, then you're screwed. I think this team, to really support it like perfectly, I think this team would have gotten up much better. Or not necessarily much, but a little bit better if Coco was Fini. If Coco was Finny, Necrozma would have been super scary. Because then you wouldn't be able to toxic I it. I totally agree. But uh, definitely a very scary draft. And uh, I'm interested to see how this goes. Especially with Tapu Coco being able to power up, for example, something like a Gigavolt Havoc from uh, Fusion Bolt. It's going to be some scary stuff to see what uh, Kiram is going to go by. And uh, yep. even forgot to mention Z Hail giving Kurum a, a plus one speed boost. Whew, that's uh, some fear. Strike some fear into your enemies. But yeah, that is the uh, number five draft. Moving on to top four, we have uh, Zappy and his uh, Miami Heatrans. Once again, another they, uh, uncommon team name. <laughs> Rotom, Miami Rotom Heats and uh, Miami Heatrans. I think the most original. Mm -hmm. I think the most original variant of that I've heard is uh, the Miami Heat Morse. Shout out to my boy Poi. I'll take you more. But uh, I more though. It's pretty sick. Um, I, don't know, better, I, don't, I don't know if I'm reading this right. Is that is that a round one torn eye? Uh, I don't think that was the round. That was just a Z Mon. Oh, did you just put him first? I'll uh, I'll look at his team. I'll look at his team Unova. That is uh, Zappy. I just want to look at it, but, uh, and then he ran. F feel free to uh, just talk about his team. Oh yeah, that is his last Pokemon, actually. <laughs> Being a Torp. Don't worry about that, though. But, um, as you can see... That wasn't bad at all. Uh, as you can see, though, his team. Megalodios, Heatran, Buzzwall, Amoongus, Florgus, Suicune, Diggersby, Torn. Uh, very, uh, very really well-built uh, team in terms of both bulk and offense. See, Buzzwall can hit like a truck, has great physical defense. Florgus, great spadef. Suicune, nice and bulky. Uh, Diggersby hitting like a truck. Megalodios, the legend. Uh, Amoongus, nice and fat. Uh, Heatran, rocker, being also able to be offensive. A uh, stall breaker, actually, with like stuff like Taunted Magma Storm with Toxic. And then you got uh, your boy Z, Tornadus, sitting there. We've talked about Tornadus a lot. This one has Prankster, though, so like Prankster Tailwind can come in clutch before it goes down, setting up the stage for something like Buzzwool to come in and just like basically fist, fist the opposing team or even diggersby can come in with like a choice band and just uh smack that team on the ass <laughs> yeah he's just got a really he's got a really good bulky team and uh pretty much everything on the team is something that whenever i look at it i'm like oh i have to prep for this so when it's not just one or two months i'm like oh i have to prep for this it's multiple it's gonna be really overwhelming when i'm playing and he's gonna I'm pretty positive he'll have a really easy time of uh, just plowing through people's teams, or if, even if he doesn't want to plow, he can just be methodical and just pick up, pick it apart a little bit at a time, and it shouldn't be difficult at all. I feel like also, you know, with um, his team, with Zappy's team, he has room for error, which is yep. something not a whole lot of teams have. But if he messes up and makes a misplaced, he has a team that can very easily pick the momentum back up and correct itself. Which is, uh, all of his mons. <laughs> yeah, and even his defensive mons, like, uh, Bosal, I guess I would count it a little bit defensive, but he ran floor disc. Um, even Amoongus isn't super duper weak. They, they can all hit. So they'll notice when they get hit by those mons. Yeah, they definitely, they, they definitely do leave a mark when they attack. Like, Florgus is no stranger to doing, uh, damage. You can also set up with Calm Mind if that's needed. Amoongus, uh, trying to set up, it also has clear smog, so you can stop that. Uh, Suicune, of course, we mentioned earlier, uh, Crocoon, very notable, an easy way to set up, uh, as long as you don't have a water absorb mon on the other team. Um, like his defensive mons, uh, can some be something he falls back on, if, of course, um, uh, calced out and prepped correctly, but I definitely feel like, uh, Zappy is the type of person that can definitely see and make this team work out. <laughs> Ugh, hate being sick. Ugh. Uh, I think that's about it for Zappy's team, though. It's, again, really well-rounded, well and uh, I'm, I know Zappy's a competent player, so I'm sure he'll use it to its best ability. So, uh, finally, progressing into the top three, though. Uh, starting off with uh, Rice Noctowl and the Houston Reggie Rockets. 
Yeah, I remember when we uh, first opened up the dock, this guy's team jumped out at me immediately. It's uh, kind of like a combination of some of the best things about people further down the list team on one team. Yeah, he has a lot of the cards. Like we mentioned Buzzwool earlier. Uh, we talked about Zardex. We talked about Raikou. We talked about Florgis, Donphan. We talked about Z Manaphy. The only two new Pokemon that we really need to hit up is Alomomola, the uh, well-known Cancerfish, and uh, Alolan Muck, as we have seen uh, from none other than the Lord himself, Envy. I uh, used two great oh, yeah. performances in the GBA. And, hashtag uh, Figgy Berry. Hashtag Figgy Berry, man. Bringing Trick, uh, trick Room to the Trick House. Uh, yeah, I mentioned C Manaphy earlier, uh, being able to set up the rain for itself. Also being able to have Hydro Vortex, being able to da uh, Twinkle Tackle from Dazzling Gleam. Also something I noticed uh, when I played in uh, NPL Miners myself actually. You think Volcanion uh, Walls Manaphy? This thing can, this thing can run con this thing can run Continental Crush from Ancient Power. Oh yeah. That, and that was, another good thing is now that there's Z-moves, uh, you don't have to necessarily be at like plus three to kill Mega Venus or Rosary with uh, Psychic, you can just go right for it to Z-move Psychic. Shout out to Shattered Psyche, my dudes. No, nah, Manaphy is an incredibly scary threat. It's tail Glow as well, something we haven't really mentioned uh, earlier with Manaphy, but Tail Glow being able to get to plus three just like that, that stuff is scary, man. And uh, Buzzwell with the Beast to Boost, uh, sub, Leech Life. Leech Life been getting that huge buff this generation, going from like what base 20 to like base 80, making yeah. it an actual viable move. Charizard X, nothing more, nothing more to be said really. I think we said everything there is to say about Char. Covered Raikou too. Floridus again is really fat and can hit actually fairly hard. It's a bit surprisingly hard. I think it's base 114. 150, it's one, 154 Spadef. Same Spadef stat as Lugia, just as a fact yeah. of the day for you and guys. And not about HP stuff. He isn't, I mean, defense isn't that bad either. For being, for being just a flower, that thing is, uh, that's a fat flower. It's a very fat flower. A Loma Mola might be questionable as a pick, but I've seen a, a Loma Mola as either someone who doesn't know how to use it at all, and it's just something that's uh, set up fodder, or someone who knows how to use it to great effect, and it is one of the biggest nuisances to ever play against in the latter or draft league format. Oh, I can't stand a Loma Mola with a good player. Like, it just is, it never dies, and it keeps passing, like, over half its health into something that, like, basically doesn't have health, and all of its health is back, and you're just sitting there, like, scratching your freaking hair out, like, why won't they just die? Yeah, Regenerator with the massive HP stat is going to make things like Dawn Fan or Alolan Muck or uh, Buzzwool for sure. It's going to make them have sustainability that they didn't really have before, which would have made push them over the edge of being really good. Like Muck is a huge nuisance because it's knockoff hits so hard that it's going to pretty much knock off a good amount of the team trying to switch around just to prevent it from being a threat and it has pursuit as well uh gunk shot is in the form of a really strong move from a really high amount of attack and it's got just amazing bulk and again with figgy berry and wish passing makes it a pretty big nuisance not to not to forget sleeping on its other ability if, in case you don't want to run the berries and gluttony it also has poison touch being meaning that like it has a 30 percent chance or something like that to poison you with a knockoff with a pursuit when you're leaving like it can just make a hurt into your team when you're like really trying to keep yourself healthy it'll just smack you on the face and then it'll leave you poisoned which will be very unfortunate and it definitely feel like uh set up maybe if you have a lumbar for example meant to counter, counter a burn and you get poisoned from this thing it's gonna be very unfortunate like muck yep. overall has uh shown itself to be way more uh reliable this generation than uh it's uh cantonian predecessor previous incarnation <laughs> That is also a uh, way of reference. That's also a way of uh, saying it. But you're not wrong. <laughs> not wrong. But yeah, that's uh, that's basically what we got to say about Hughes and Reggie Rockets. We've mentioned basically what it is to say about it, everything else on his roster. It's just well built, a decent mixture between good offense and good bulk. And uh, I think he's gonna do some great things. Don't see any like particular common weaknesses across his team either that should. Uh, arise as an issue. Temper him too much. I think the only, the, like, the biggest weakness I see is, like, grass, and even that, that's not a type that you commonly see. Like, the hardest hitting grass moves is usually grass knot, and most of his Pokemon weak to grass is pretty light, so. And he's got, like, two quad, he's got a quad resistance, a bug, and a poison type, so should be fine. Yep. 
But yeah, moving on to the number two team, uh, we got, uh, let's see here, oh. Number Man, two, we got the real, the, the real Damon and the LA Landorus. Pretty scary team right here as well. I really like the way he finished off this team because it was really offensive uh, with Ferrothorn and Tapofini. And then he added in Mega Sableye and Snorlax, which uh, I prove a lot. Because Tapofini, Mega Sableye. Mold Breaker Toxic ain't gonna work. Uh, and then you got Magic Bounce from Normal. Uh, you got Tapofini just protecting the entirety of his team, other than like Azelf and Thunderous from status, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either because those things just are there to hit really hard. Uh, Azelf, great rocker, U-Turner, great momentum. His speed tiers are looking kinda nice. As you see, go for 115, 108, 109, or 101, uh, Nita Queen, Tapofini, um, Ferrothorn, and then it drops. Like from Nita Queen, it drops really badly down to Ferrothorn, but they're meant to be slow, meant to be bulky. You got Snorlax, Curselax, everybody loves Curselax, man. That, uh, fat body pillow, everybody appreciates them. Got a Sableye, just yeah, as this annoying team... as Uh, carry on. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the team is definitely like methodical is the word that comes to mind when I look at it just because like he's got Z-Torn which has Thundy. I think Tornadus I mean, Thundy. Thundy, I'm sorry, Thunderous. Uh, Thunderous has probably the best coverage in draft format and that there's no mon I can really think of right off the bat that not some combination of the right EV and the right Z move uh, can't either Oko or two hit KO into another move. I, um, I honestly dare say, like, I've, I've stand by this since about, like, after Pokebank came out. I think that, um, in Generation 7, uh, Thunderous T is by far the scariest electric death mon in Draft League format. Just with the addition yeah, of Z I've moves, I think... Get absolutely decimated by it. I think this gen, uh, last gen, I don't remember exactly who it was, uh, that had the reign of, like, uh, main, uh, electric type. But I feel like Thundy T is the scariest one this generation just because of that massive stat in special attack and it being able to carry a Z move. And uh, Tapu Fiend, again yeah. is uh, just absolutely amazing because it can defog and it protects the entire team, which uh, kind of works with being on or having longevity. And uh, it helps keep it that way. Uh, keeps Hazards off the field, and he will never ever have difficulty. I'd imagine keeping Hazards on the field. He's got Toxic Spikes and Needle Queen, four Stealth Rockers, uh, Spikes with Fair Thorn. I keep, and, I keep like, forgetting that Infernic can set up rocks. Forward. I know it can as soon as somebody mentions it to me, but I keep forgetting. I was looking at the I was like, I see three rockers, and you mentioned four. I'm like, oh wait, shit, crap. Of course, Inferno can do that too. Mm -hmm. So uh, he can cycle out the other opponent's team. He can even run like Roar Needle Queen and like get all of his Pokemon, his opponent's Pokemon down like 50%, and then just pick them apart with uh, Thundee or annoy them with Sableye, which is going to probably be the central central focus of being annoying with the team. Then he's got Infernape, which is a really good uh, either band user or choice scarf user, uh, or even in like Nasty Potter SD, it can just be a massive nuisance to the team in terms of like an offensive threat, same with Nidoclean. Um, Ferrothorn can actually hit fairly hard, it's got a usable attack set. Azelf is a really good uh, either screens or hazard setter, and it also has a really, really good attack and special attack set to take advantage of. And Snorlax, Snorlax are just fantastic. Uh, it's got its you know, unique Z, or it can't use its unique Z move, but this gen it just did a lot for it. Um, and with the barriers that are available now, like Figgy Barrier Cycle, makes it really easy to keep it alive and keep setting up with it or just hitting really hard. And I've always liked Snorlax, especially in Draft League format. And, and now, and now in Generation Seven, like you mentioned with the Figgy Bear Recycle thing, you can run the Flames Belly Drum Recycle. Oh, flames. <laughs> I've tried that. I try, I try that on the ladder. It's absolutely ridiculous when you catch people off guard with it. It's so much fun. But on the mention of Inferno, yeah, well, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty surprised in a 16-man draft open draft that Inferno went round four. It's a very impressive pickup for that late. Yeah, 100% behind you on that. But yeah, so Normally. very, very overall solid draft from uh, Real Damon and the LA Landers see this uh team making it far like it's a very nice combination of bulk uh nuisances and scary offensive threats and especially with thunderous holding that z crystal as well it's gonna be a lot of uh it's gonna be a great havoc dealing with this team yep 
And uh, that only leaves one left, and that is going to be Magic, David, and the FC Poplio. Now this, this team, team is really aesthetically pleasing to the eye. <laughs> to the eye, this team is beautiful. On paper, it's this gorgeous. Team. And in practice, play correctly. Oh. This team, man, just looking at it right now just gives a tear to my eye. It might be because I'm tired and I'm recording this at 1.40 a.m., but uh, who knows. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out uh, to you, man. Last minute. Got uh, Zeke here in black again. Scary Pokemon. This thing is an absolute monster. It's so terrifying. Got Mega Scizor again. I think this team uh, helps it more than the Rain team earlier. Rain is always nice for it, but I feel like this team just lets it be run a little bit more wild and have not rely too much on its other teammates as much. Got Infernape, uh, Greninja, U-Turn, great, <laughs> probably the two best starters in all of Pokemon, being Greninja and the Monkey. Uh, priority, <laughs> prior, heavy priority users, Bullet Punch, Bot Punch, uh, Vacuum Wave, and Water Shuriken. Water Shuriken being, getting that buff, this gem being special for Greninja. Um, as to mention, huge coverage uh, among the first four Pokemon here, like especially with Inferno and Gran. Also, Kieran Black uh, talked about uh, Delmice earlier in terms of uh, Anchor Shot, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Power Whip, Rock Rapid Spin. Uh, honestly, Delmice is such a under like it's such an overwhelming Pokemon for what we first got it as. Like we see a pos yeah. possessed seaweed taking over an Anchor and think, oh, what's this thing gonna do? Whoa, this thing is good. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Got uh, the fat. Oh, uh, when I got leaf, I really didn't like it. Got the the one and only fat lunar duck, uh, Cresselia. I've used this thing in the past myself. Love this thing as a wall. If uh, played correctly, this thing is not set up fodder at all. I would not try it. Cause uh, and the thing about Cress as well is you can't beat it directly. If you try to hit it hard, it's not going to die. You need to take it down passively, which uh, trying to play passive against David is going to be really hard with the rest of his team. So, gotta watch out for that. And being forced to prep to play a bit passively because of uh, Crest and like Taunt and Toxic and stuff like that. Um, with mods like Togekiss, Nido King, and his top four, it's just gonna be it's gonna be very hard to pull off. <laughs> uh, Togekiss, Paraflinch God. Uh, you also got Roost, Defog, Heal Bell. Just to mention a few things. Uh, utility, great utility Pokemon, very bulky. And Nido King just to finish the icing on the cake, just more coverage, more damage. This thing, this team just hurts, and it just, it's, it's beautiful. Every time I look at a place, like I'm thinking about holes that this team has, or I'm looking at as I'm going down, they keep getting like answered. Like he's got a really great physical arm, um, Sizzler. You really can't get much better than that. You got Togekiss, which can be a pseudo wall for both sides of the, uh, both sides of the force, I should say. Um, it's got Roost, it's got Defog, Heal Bell to make it so things like uh, Inferno Burger Ninja being paralyzed won't be that big a deal if Scizor gets burned, if Delmize gets toxic, or uh, Priscilla gets toxic. It's got Wish as well. Um, Nido King just blows through anything that would be like a really uh, wall, I guess. Like it's a great wall breaker. Like obviously, uh, Delmize can get rid of hazards, Togekiss can get rid of hazards, Sizzler can get rid of hazards, it's got every form of hazards and pocket spikes, spikes and stealth rock on this team. Shout out to the uh, lack of sticky web when you mention all hazards. Sticky web, but he's got the ones that are commonly used and aren't like niche. I mean, sticky web um, has had a great rise in this gen, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll disregard the webs. We don't need the webs. The speed tiers are great too with Greninja and uh, Nape. And for an ape, uh, Kyurem's not that slow either. Priscilla is actually a fast wall. Uh, base 85 and Nido King, base 80 and Togekiss. Uh, he's Sick. got all of his offensive and special attack, hard hitting mons covered, wall breakers covered. Uh, lots of priority too Greninja, Sizzler, and uh, Infernape. Just He's got everything going for him with this team, and I'm just really excited to see his battles just because this team is sick. I was also going to mention, like, if he feels like he needs to bring a Pokemon back for a second resort, he also has Lunar Dance Crest. But then I realized the two main Pokemon that I thought that would help is, like, Roost, Kieran Black, and uh, Roost, Scizor. But I mean, mm -hmm. I guess you can give Infernape or Greninja a second shot if they just tear through the opponent's team. Yeah. But, so, uh, he, I think he definitely deserves the number one spot. 
I, I, I don't see uh, any other reason uh, for uh, David not deserving his number one slot. But uh, that uh, has been the Unova um, Conference Power Rankings with yours truly and uh, Dom's Game Room. Be sure to check out both the links in the description as well. I don't know how many other links will be in the description, but check out everything. Um, be sure to check out the games as well so from the, the different coaches. Thank you all so much for the support. Be sure to leave a like on this video as well if you've enjoyed. Subscribe. There will also be different uh, power rankings for the Alola Conference, uh, Kalos Conference, and Sita Conference hosted by uh, different people. They will be hosted by Ethan and Rufus in Alola. Drew and Ben and Kalos and Gareth and Ice, uh, I think it's Demon Ice or Grey, Ice Demon or something in uh, Sinnoh. So be on the lookout for those videos too. But with that, me and Dom, we're going to be out of here. Thank you all for watching again. Have a beautiful day. We hope to see you guys with, uh, on our channels for our GOT battles. Bye. Later, guys.